Welcome as we gather to celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the people of the parish. Our presider today is our pastor, Father Darrell Winkler. Please stand. gathered this afternoon in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us take a moment to be mindful of our need for God's mercy and God's uh, forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, Lord have mercy. 
Christ Jesus, those who follow you will always have the light of life. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you lead us through the darkness of this world to the radiant joy of our eternal home. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And now let us join our brothers and sisters around the world in giving God glory. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. From the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba, shall come. 
They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow hearers, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem 
of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they, heard, when they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after having been warned in, in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. The um, feast we celebrate today is called the Epiphany. And um, that's what the theme is. It, Epiphany means um, an insight that comes to us from God. You know, some insight that we've had. I remember when I was teaching high school and uh, I was teaching something about grammar. I can't remember what the topic was, but I had a student and he said, I just don't get it. Just don't get what we're doing here. And I tried to explain for it and then I saw his eyes open and I thought he's just had an epiphany. <laughs> he gets why we can't whatever we were doing and it was an amazing thing to see and I've seen this in others and I've seen it in myself. At some point we just get a glimpse of an insight that helps us and epiphany is usually associated, not always, um, like when I'm talking about this student that wasn't about God, it was about grammar, but um, usually we associate epiphany as we do this day with a, some revelation, some insight, some knowledge that helps us in our lives, which comes from God. So we see uh, today the theme for me is journey, the journey of the wise men. That represents us, I guess. It could be us, this, these wise people who are seeking something. They know their life could be better. They, they know that there is more to this world than, than, we, than meets the eye or that we have at the moment. So they're on a constant journey, seeking, searching, looking for more wisdom, I guess, more spiritual insight. It's not about, you know, a power, like Herod is concerned about his power. He becomes jealous. He eventually... Um, has all the babies killed in Bethlehem, the baby boys, because he's jealous for power. That's what he seeks. That's what he's searching for. That's not what the wise men and the wise people are searching for in this life. And um, there are so many things that are associated with this day because this epiphany, which comes to us from God, is also not meant just for the chosen. That's what we hear in the first reading today. The chosen were the Jews. We would all agree that God appeared to them and he loved them, but they didn't have it easy. And the reading today is about God's vision for these people as they return from an exile in Babylon. And they've been encouraged to return to Jerusalem. And some of them, some of them are saying, I don't know if I wanna go back there. What's there to go back to? It was devastated. Does it make sense for us to go back to where we came from, which is now very devastated, depressed, uh, despairing? And the vision today says, go there, because God will light your way. And God has 
a plan for you that the light you receive from him will be used so that you can show it to others. You become a nation of light for all the other nations in the world. And that's the second point today is that epiphany is meant for everybody, not just for a certain few, but for all of us, everybody, everywhere, that God's wisdom and love and care is meant for everybody. That's an important lesson today in this feast of the epiphany. Um, the, the epiphany, I wrote down some notes here. I, I kind of think of these wise people as patron saints of growth and transformation because that's what they seek. They seek transformation, growth, evolution in their own way of looking at life. And no matter how much they accomplished and learned in love, God keeps offering more to them. And I'm saying this for us too. No matter where we are, it's not all that there is. There is more that God wants to share with us, especially those of us who are willing to seek and find this contentment, this spiritual wisdom that helps us realize um, God's love evermore. And this kind of journeying, this kind of searching and seeking is a way of life that is beyond grumbling and complaint and polarization and fighting and tribalism. It goes above, it transcends all of that. And I remember hearing about a psychologist, you may have heard of him, named Maslow. And he says, we are constantly, if, for those who desire it, we're, spiritual growth, we continue to evolve to a point where we achieve real, true spiritual maturity. And when we're there, we're not likely to be worried about all the polarities. We're not worried about Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals, that's beyond, it's beyond that. Those who are spiritually mature are above and beyond these kinds of things. The sad thing is not many of us get there, according to Maslow. It's just a very, it's the cream of the crop who make it to this kind of spiritual maturity and insight into life, this kind of equanimity with the world. And some of our journeys may lead us not to a deeper, but to dead ends, going nowhere, maybe leading us to burnout or leading us to despair or leading us to just be in a rut at a dead end. But the, the model of the Magi is they don't stay still. They find themselves, for instance, at a dead end with Herod, but they don't stop. They continue. And it says they don't listen to Herod. They find their way back home using a different route. They change things. Things are no longer the same. And maybe in some ways, I'm using the Magi as a model for my own life. I, um, I'm on, I want to be on a journey to growth, spiritual growth. Most of us are who are here tonight. And so what happened is I have planned to be away for six weeks. I leave on Saturday, January the 14th, next, a week from tonight, or today, and I'll be gone for six, about six weeks. I return on February the 27th. And I'm going to a special facility which was created for priests and brothers and sisters to receive renewal, um, rest, spiritual growth. That's what I want. You know, even though I'm an older person, I'm nowhere near where I want to be spiritually and uh, intellectually and physically. I'd like to lose some, some of what I have. And where I'm going, there is a physical trainer. He helps us to lose the extra pounds that we have. There is a dietitian that will teach us how to eat properly and, and how to plan. There's spiritual direction. There's therapy if we need it. There's all kinds of things. And for six weeks, I just want to bask in this growth that is possible for me. 
and uh, share it when I attain with others in the parish. So um, I use the Magi to, I'm searching and seeking also. I'm looking for growth. I want to grow. I don't want to remain static. I don't want to remain stuck. And I don't want my journey to end up in a dead end. So I'm going to use them as my guides, as encouragement for me to, in the next six weeks, uh, learn, grow, transform, seek transcendence, those kinds of things. And my hope is that all of us will get a chance to do that in this coming year in some form. Now, I'm, you know, I, I don't think it's about age. I was a, a, called ageist because I said I can't remember things anymore because of my age. And they said, no, no, that means you have too much to remember, and so that has nothing to do with age. So I agree. Now, but nevertheless, I'm bringing, before I forget, um, I want to make an announcement. You know, we've been praying for a young man named Aidan Warswick for months, for over a year. He's been sick with a form of cancer, and he died last week, and he was only 26. He got married and was in a beautiful job for which he had studied many years. But he passed away, and his funeral was going to take place here. But the family decided it might be better logistically to have it at Tumpet, Tubman's Garden Chapel on Saturday, the same day that I'm leaving, Saturday, June the 14th. And it's in Richmond Road, January the 14th at 1. And I'm telling you this because I think we've announced it in different places that it was going to be here. But they've decided just to have it at Tubman's. And I just wanted to make that announcement for those who wanted to support Brenda Warswick over the death of her grandson, Brenda and John. Secondly, I'm supposed to announce that for the reconciliation fund, you know, for reconciliation in our diocese, we have raised, um, this parish has donated uh, $6,910. So this was above what we were challenged to do. So this is something to be grateful for. Finally, do you know we had a, and I, know I'm, I shouldn't be doing this in my homily, but anyway, we had a campaign called the Hospitality and Accessibility Campaign. It was to raise money for our lift member and for a new boiler and for the roof over the rectory. And it was a lot of money. And this week, we've paid it all off. So the, all of that is done. <laughs> That's through generosity, people donating uh, for that. And so now we can begin another campaign. I don't know what we, let's figure out what we can do another campaign for. Anyway, God bless you all. Having listened to God's word, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we journey closer to Christ, let us entrust the needs of our community and the needs of the world to God. Let us offer our prayers and petitions. May the light of the Epiphany Star shine brightly on Pope Francis as he guides the Church through 2023. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the wisdom of the visitors from the East 
inspire world leaders to succeed in achieving global peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the joy of epiphany fill the hearts of those seeking a deeper relationship with Christ, especially Michelle Tracy, who is celebrating her First Communion this Sunday, and for Sister Catherine Yampa and Sister Suzanne Sisuma, who have just celebrated their final vows with the Sisters of Holy Cross. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May both the vision and courage of the Magi encourage each of us to recognize the star, guiding us with the courage to respond. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That, just as the Magi were inspired by the Holy Spirit, young men and women will be inspired to follow in the footsteps of the Lord as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May we rediscover God's visions of creation that emphasizes the natural world in the spirit of praise, praise, joy, and gratitude. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sick and those who care for them be healed and comforted, especially Henry Dreistick, Tristic, Mark Elliott, Tom Charlebois, Edmund Edwards, Teresa Hall, John Dorner, Amanda Monet, and Hazel Pareka. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May those who have died, especially Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, Aidan Worswick, Jerry Riopel, Joanne Kian, Wanda Bartoli, those who have died in Ukraine, and those who have died from the coronavirus, be welcome to the fullness of light, joy, and peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Creator God, you journey with each of us just as you journeyed with the Magi, drawing us closer to your beloved Son. Receive these prayers that we may be beacons of hope in a dark world. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial one by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Basil and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and we remember especially Aidan Warswick and Wanda Bartoli, Jerry Riopel, and Brian Mori, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on this world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, go before us with heavenly light, O oh Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Please be seated. We just have a couple of announcements. Please join St. Basil's Conversations for Our Times on Zoom this Sunday, January 8th at 2.30 p.m. with Father Luis Roy. Interreligious dialogue and listening to one another in this world of difference. Please register beforehand using the Zoom link to register on the St. Basil's website. St. Vincent de Paul needs additional winter coats and boots for both adults and children. Most of us have extra warm coats and boots just sitting at the back of our closets. A collection space with a coat wrap has been set up in the narthex. Items donated are very much appreciated. Donations will be delivered to St. Vincent de Paul on Wellington Street special blessing on this Feast of Epiphany. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, May God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him with the, whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.